Hey everyone, it's Ed. Welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about the latest beta release from the Supernote platform. Uh, some really interesting features. Uh, no real new things except for one, which is the Inkflow app has been updated. And we'll talk about that uh, a little bit more specifically when we get there. But I want to set the stage by saying this is a lot of fixes. So this beta is really about optimizations, fixes, and slight adjustments. And I think that what Supernote is doing here is what we've seen them kind of doing this entire year so far, which is really doubling down on the experience. What they're not doing is issuing a bunch of new devices. That's not their sweet spot. It's not the thing you're going to see them do on a consistent, regular basis. So what they're doing is they're investing a lot of time and energy into software fixes, enhancements. And even though this doesn't have new features, except for in that Inkflow app, it has a lot of really important things. So right now, let's go ahead and jump on over there and we will take a look. So you can look here and you can see on the screen what we've got. And this is for the Manta and the Nomad. Now, everything here except for this top part where you see the note about the Inkflow app was also released for the A5X. Again, showing that very clear vision that Supernote has about making sure they're still maintaining their prior systems and trying to keep them up as much as possible. They're still hoping to get the Inkflow app on the A5X, but of course that is Android 8.1, so there are some challenges. But I do want to show and just talk about these really quick. So first, uh, one thing that I did run into is if you reflow the view in Word, it didn't automatically save that reflow. Now it does. So when you go back into that document, if you've reflowed it, it's going to show what you did with that zoom whether you increased it or decreased it before it would reset. And that's not a great place to be, especially if you're used to seeing it a certain way. Optimizations. So they optimize the refresh mode to reduce, reduce after images on the screen when turning pages. And they've done an excellent job of the ghosting performance. Now, one thing that they haven't done extremely well is there's that reverse ghosting that you've heard Rod at Rants About Tech talk about. If you're on text and you switch to a darker image, you're going to see those text remnants as lighter. So it's really interesting. But if you go from an image to text, you're going to see almost nothing. Uh, they improve the refreshing technique to minimize after images when using the selection or the lasso tool to move things. Uh, that was already doing pretty good. The biggest issue, I think, is they may have made it so that it doesn't flash as aggressively. A handwriting, enhanced real-time display effect of handwriting. I thought this was already really good. Uh, I don't know that I'd be able to notice a difference. Then you'll see a bunch of fixes. And this is where... I didn't encounter all of these. As a matter of fact, I don't think there are any of these that I encountered. Uh, but again, the fact that they listen to the community, the fact they take the feedback, and then they find out where the issues are and push out these fixes. Uh, and, and some of these, quite frankly, I didn't use as much. Fixed where custom templates opened via the sidebar menu would occasionally overwrite with the previous note fixed where the note failed to open via the quick access menu occasionally display the content of a previous note so there were some bug fixes there also handwritten content now this one i think i might have seen uh, handwritten content in the real-time recognition note would occasionally be lost after continuously turning pages i think that may have happened during one of my blog uh, writing sessions, but I just hit re-recognize and it caught everything back up. So I might have thought it was just a one-time glitch, but obviously it was being reported other than that. Undo redo, I've never had an issue with that, but I'm glad they fixed it for those who were. Uh, and it may have been on the Manta, some of these, because this is a patch for both devices, because remember they're running the same operating system and the same versions. So the idea being that if you fix one, you fix the other. Fix the issue where Word app would occasionally crash after prolonged editing with a Bluetooth keyboard. 
any advancements they can make with how that Word app functions on the Supernote platform, I think is always going to be a value add. Uh, fix the issue where some PDFs would freeze during loading. That happened to me early on with an update, but hadn't happened in quite a while. So I don't know if it was still lingering depending on size or what the issue was. And then finally, they fixed the issue where handwriting input on the handwriting keyboard would be added as an annotation when adding a comment to highlighted text. Again, that's something that I hadn't run into, uh, but I can see where it would be a serious problem. If you're trying to do a comment in a PDF, which is a specific function, and it's supposed to convert your handwriting to text and then put that into an embedded PDF comment, and it turns it into an annotation instead, that would be a problem. <laughs> So uh, we'll just have to see, maybe somebody down in the comments can drop if they were having these issues and we can go from there uh, because I did not have that issue specifically. Now let's take a quick look at what they've done in Inkflow. And this is something that I think is really interesting because this is a functionality and I've demoed it before, but it was really kind of a, it was, it was a very first generation product. So it did a lot of really cool things, but you couldn't do it in a lot of different programs. And it wasn't quite as sensitive in certain programs as it was in others. So they've done a lot of work here, and I think they really deserve a lot of credit. So what they've added, improved pen pressure sensitivity for touch interactions, which is really cool. Uh, supports setting the pen touch area to fixed ratios for compatibility with screens of different resolutions. It also supports the side button of the Lamy All-Star EMR pen to activate shortcut functions and drawing softwares. I think that is really neat, and it shows you this path that they're going down to really double down on this as a Wacom enabled drawing tablet. Now it's not the drawing tablet like the ones with the new screens, but the traditional Wacom tablets that you've seen around for years that are used to plug into your computer and then draw in a program. The optimizations is where it gets really interesting. So it added support for landscape mode. So now instead of having to go in, change the setting, turn the device with the setting, you turn that device any way you want and it'll turn automatically. So the auto rotation is there. It's pretty cool. The second bullet point here, I think is probably the biggest piece because for those of you who watch Brad Colbo and see some of the things that he's been doing, these are a lot of the programs that he talks about. So they added compatibility with the following apps on Windows. Clip Studio Paint, Adobe Photoshop, 25, Krita, Fire Alpaca, Paint Tool, SAI 2, Rebel, Affinity Pro, Art Rage, a lot of different things. And there's some extra configuration needed if you're going to use them with the pressure sensitivity, but it does work. And then they also added that on Mac OS, they added a lot of those same things. Now, I would note here at the top, they mentioned that after upgrading, you also have to upgrade the partner app on Mac. There's something in the Inkflow with Mac that you have to keep the app running for Supernode for this to work. With a Windows PC, all you have to do is plug it in and it automatically recognizes your primary screen. And before, the biggest issue was when you had something like Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator. It just, the latency was bad. And that's all I can say. It just wasn't good. However, if I went into Microsoft and I used their inking feature, whether that was in, I think I tested it on PowerPoint when I showed it, it was extremely fast, like really quick. So what I did at work on my lunch the other day was I plugged this in with this beta update and I opened Adobe Illustrator and I opened OneNote and I opened PowerPoint. And in all three of those cases, it was instantaneous. So what I'll do, and we'll pop over here in just a second, I will show you the device in real time with my screen so that you can see when that pin is down and moving, it is really moving that fast. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on over and take a look. All right, so I'm trying to make this as easy to see as possible. It's a little hard because of just the screen size and trying to get both of these things on the screen at the same time. So that's why you see the top and bottom looking a little bit weird. But I want to make sure that you can see the full screen in both cases. 
So what you'll notice here is I've opened up Inkflow. I've put my grid here, which makes it a little bit easier for me to see where I'm at on the pad. It lets me know how to track. And right now we're going to start, and we're going to start with one note. And what I want you to notice is as I get closer, you can see this cursor over here on the left on the screen. Now, once I press this down, I'm now writing on the screen. And if you look at just how quick that is, and I hope that it's picking up the detail, but it really, really picks fast, picks up fast. And you can draw a straight line in one note. You can draw up and down. That's not going to be straight because I didn't draw it straight. But see, it snaps just like any other drawing program. Yeah, I can, as long as I pay attention to my grid and know where I'm at, I can actually write really legible with this. So I can put, it is really, of course, my handwriting's awful right now because I'm trying to do this live. <laughs> but that's me not being sure of where I'm at. When I am, it works really well. So I can go this really it cool. And you'll notice that my pen strokes look really good. That's your Wacom tablet doing all of that work. And of course, I can take and go up here, and I can use this with a combination of my mouse as well. Uh, but let's say I want to go up here and I want to go to draw, and now I want to change my pen type to red, and now I can draw. And again, just look at that latency. And the reason I'm doing both of these together is I just wanted to show you how much that's been optimized. And it really does. And even look at the lines, how accurate they are. Now let's switch over really quickly and I will show you in Illustrator. So the same thing. Now here's Illustrator. And what you'll notice is that I get this whole canvas here. Now you can change the writable area, but that arrow lets you know where you're at. And right now it's on the selection tool. Let's go over and we will pick one of our pen tools. So we'll pick the pencil. And look how quickly that writes. Again, watch here as I press down. And then when I move, it moves. There's no latency there whatsoever. So I can say, now it's doing this in vector, so it's turning these into lines and giving me different vector points to where I can then move those if I want to and connect them. And then the last one we'll do here is going to be PowerPoint. So here I am now in PowerPoint, and I can go over here to draw, just like I did before. I can pick my pen, and now I can draw a line. And what you'll notice here is I can draw a thin line, or I can get more pressure sensitive. And that was the same in OneNote. So you can get really, really fine or really big. And again, that accuracy is crazy. And it'll take you even off the slide. So the truth is, you know, you can interact with anything on the screen, but it's only going to actually let you draw outside of the menus. But it's kind of neat, and you can really, really get in there and go and do different stuff. All right, so here we are in a PDF, and this might be a little bit easier to show the highlighting tool. And so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select my highlight. It's on the highlight. And I'm going to select my color. And I prefer yellow. So now when I come back here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to highlight this. And now you see that's highlighted. And it, and it moves really fast if I want to. So I can go ahead and select down and highlight as much as I want. Now, when I press that, I get the menu pop up to change the color, to delete, or to add a comment. If I want to add a comment, now I can pop over. Here is a And then I could post that. 
So again, a lot of different things that you can do with this functionality. And then I could always go back and delete that, go back and delete this one. I could write in the margins if I wanted to. So I'll go back over here and I'll change my pen style. And again, this is me using this very limited just to be able to mess around with it and do some different things. So we can go up here to the pointer, the selector, uh, and we can change that to a pen. And then we could annotate in the margins if we wanted to. And this is my handwriting that's the issue. You can see that it's definitely correcting my writing somewhat, uh, but I could put in comments. But the accuracy and the speed is the thing that I want to show here as just out of this world, really. You're just not going to get that on a device that doesn't have EMR. But the optimization here is really, really good. All right, everyone. Thanks for hanging in with me through that. I, it was a little bit rough. Uh, you know, again, these aren't tools that I use all of the time. I can really see myself if I needed to have that bigger real estate, though, using this to mark up papers, to annotate, to comment, to do things that are a little harder to do on the Manta just because of the form factor. Uh, the size is almost there. Really, the 13.3 inch device is perfect if you're looking at academic papers, if you're looking at anything that you would be looking at on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. And those are the things that this, I think, can help you with. Now, for the artists out there, I think the way it's now been optimized specifically with all of these different drawing applications in mind shows where Supernote is headed with this. But anyway, let me know down in the comments, do you think this is cool? Do you think these optimizations are going to be useful? Do you think that Supernote needs to continue to go down this route of optimizing for creativity and creativity, including writing and drawing? And I think that, I think in some ways that's a really good way to go. And I think it maximizes the utility of the technology they have in their devices. That Wacom layer is capable of so much more than just e-ink. And using for it for that, I think, in some ways is really genius. But let me know down in the comments. Uh, have a conversation with me. Tell, you, tell me I'm off base. Tell me I'm right. Uh, thank you all for supporting me. Thank you for helping us reach over 2,700 subscribers now. Thank you for those who are enrolled in the online class. Look forward here very soon to at least one, if not two modules uh, being released. We're about to release modules three for sure and four coming after that. Total of nine modules. You'll find the link down in the description below. Thank you to all of my YouTube insiders and my patrons. You'll see them scrolling on the screen right now. And until next time, keep on moving forward, and I will talk to you soon. Thank you all so much. Have a great day.